Hey, what up, everybody? This is Maxi Priest, and don't forget, you're listening to Brigade Radio One. Stay tuned. You're listening to Brigade Radio One. Speaking of characters, uh, are you going to tell us what it was like dealing with uh, Aerosmith right out of rehab? You're going you're to do that again to me. You're going to make me. Well, I think Dan really wants time. to know. Yeah, yeah, I, I got to tell you something. They, they were, um, you know, they were pretty reasonable for guys that had been on a uh, on a tear for what two, three years. Yeah. And I didn't know what they what they had gone through until I heard kind of after the fact, you know. But I'll tell you what was happening. They were going. They were playing in this uh, Wayne's World two. Correct. Um, uh, finale, and we were we were we were shooting. We were shooting in I don't even know what place it was, but we were shooting this 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 concert. And as they were shooting, the lawyers for Paramount were in the basement making the deal. Really? Does that sound late to you? Yeah, it does oh, sound a little late. It's a little late. It's a sweaty deal. Yeah. Is, is that... What I love is that they couldn't even go near the Starbucks truck because of their. <laughs> So then, after this concert, then we got on stage. We shot the rest of the thing on the concert, and it you know went until very late. And um, yeah, we were we were ordering. We opened a Starbucks nearby, and, and you know we're shipping in coffee, and they went they weren't interested in that because they were you know it was it was like it was civilian amphetamine. You know, was basically the concept. <laughs> yeah. They had just finished up with I don't know fifty million dollars worth of blow in a hotel room. Is that all worth? I can't remember. I told Buck Cherry that when I interviewed them uh, at the Canyon before their gig, and those guys have a. A, an admitted cocaine problem and they were like wow that's impressive that's really, <laughs> those guys were like blown away by the numbers they're like that's that's impressive if those calculations are correct you know it's funny because Slash in his book talks about when Guns N' Roses went on tour with Aerosmith and the tour manager brings them all in a room not Aerosmith but Guns N' Roses goes alright listen up I know about you guys I know your rep I know what you're like no drugs nothing around this band they're just out of rehab I don't want any stupid shit nothing if, that, if I see anything, if I hear anything, if I catch wind of anything, you're fired. He's like looking at Slash, and Slash keeps saying that. He keeps like motioning towards me, you know, and he goes, and listen, I don't want nothing, nothing, absolutely no marijuana, nothing, not a goddamn thing. They don't even have coffee. I don't want anything, no vodka, no dr-. And he's like, and Slash is like, easy, buddy. And he goes, and then like, the guy leaves, and Slash goes, what's this guy's problem? Everyone knows we're... We're not the kind to hold and tell. Anyway. Hold and tell. You know, because they were all, of course, they all had their drugs. It's like, we're not the, we're not, he says, we're, we weren't the sharing kind anyway. So uh-huh. it's like, I don't know what this guy's problem was. <laughs> I'm going to come to you and I throw my dope yeah. out of my phone. Here's my mind. dope, Steven. You're listening to Brigade Radio 1. 